Hey, everybody. Welcome to SportsMapHouston.com. I'm John Grinnell. That's Josh Jordan. You can hear us on ESPN 97.5 and see Josh's work at SportsMapHouston.com. Hit subscribe if you haven't yet so that you get all of our content here at SportsMap. H-O-U. And to watch all of our Texans coverage, including our new Texans on Tap podcast with Charlie Palillo, go subscribe to our new channel, Sports Map Texans on YouTube. You can find it by searching at Sports Map Texans, all one word. A lot has been made about Hector Neris, the, the star, the hero that we all needed, showing up Julio Rodriguez in the series finale in Seattle, and it could not have been better. It led to a three-run seventh inning by the Astros. Well, did he take it too far? Or was that exactly the spark that the Astros needed? I think it was definitely the spark that the Astros needed. Now, we're hearing reports from the Mariners that, you know, maybe what he said took it a little too far, that maybe it was a homophobic slur, and that's what upset some of the guys on deck and in the, in the clubhouse. But it is what the Astros needed from just – to get them going you know we've been saying they've just been playing lifeless lately and that seemed to change everything I I was happy to see a little emotion from this team you know after McCormick got plunked the other night had to leave the game I didn't see a lot of you know I didn't see much action about that didn't seem like the care factor was that high and then you heard from the Astros players after the game they said it definitely gave them a spark And, and look what happened they blow up in that inning and put the game out of reach so that that homophobic slur the alleged homophobic slur uh, has different meanings in different countries so he's from the Dominican Eugenio, uh, Eugenio Suarez is from Venezuela it may have a different meaning the word that he said in Venezuela than it does in the Dominican Republic it is more used like there are certain words that are used in certain countries that have less meaning than others and I think that might be one of those words I don't care. He went after Julio Rodriguez after Rodriguez homered off of him last year and was showing him up. I think that was awesome. You know, I I just I can't couldn't have happened to a worse person than Scott Service. Okay, yes. all of this stuff that went on and the Astros taking two out of three, so it can't be happier. And Hector Norris, thank you, thank you for your service. I want to thank you all for keeping Texas chill with cold, clean, crisp, refreshing Coors Light. If you're looking for the world's most refreshing beer, I got it. It's it's Coors Light. I'll be having some today. I've got my golf attire on, so you can guarantee that I'll be, when I'm playing golf or when I'm watching games, or when I'm just hanging out, I'm having a cold, clean, crisp, refreshing Coors Light. I'm keeping Texas chill. I'm doing my part. You do your part as well. Another thing that can motivate the Astros, Uncle Mike. He gets up and he just hits. It's it is so unbelievable how good this guy is. After not playing for 10 days, he gets four hits in that game. It He's going to be crucial. How much deeper is this lineup with Uncle Mike in it? Oh, it makes all the difference in the world because he, think, he keeps things moving after Abreu down the middle to the bottom of the order. It's not – you don't just stall out right there. You got somebody that's going to put bat on the ball. And I think back to the the no more sad hugs, Michael Brantley speech that he gave last year before the World Series when they were down to to Philly. And I felt like that was the case last night, but he could actually help you on the mm-hmm. field. He could go out there and get some big clutch hits. I think that's going to be huge moving forward. I also say that they're going to have to manage him, right? You, you don't want him to play too much and re-injure himself, but – if he's healthy, you want to play him as much as you can. These games are crucial, okay? We're not saving anybody anymore for, you know, oh, I want him to play the next nine games. No, you got to play now. We got to do this now. And so Uncle Mike coming back, it changes the dynamic. But I'm going to tell you this. You know, I know everybody's clamoring for Yiner, Yiner, Yiner. Yiner at times is looking a little bit lost at the plate. That slider away, there's a book on him now. He does not take any pitches, and he's chasing a lot of sliders away. Maldonado is hitting. Dubon is hitting. You know, I don't know how you're going to get everybody into the lineup with uh, Uncle Mike back and Dubon hitting and Chaz uh, and Jordan and Yiner. So you got some good problems. Uncle Mike just makes you that much deeper, that much tougher, but your bench is deeper now. You don't have to bring John Singleton in to pinch it every more, ever again. Okay, we don't have to do that. As I repeat, ever again. No, we don't need to see that. And you got Dubon now. We'll we'll see how you know if Chaz is healthy. So if you got Dubon and Uncle Mike, you got a lot of options. And I want to circle back to Naris just for a second too. I like that he went after their leader. You know what I mean? He kind of punked him in front of the entire team. And then his next at bat, he strikes out to Presley. After the game, he was gone before yep. media could even come in there and talk to him. So it just it felt like a really savvy move by. 
by Naris, and then it got red ass Bregman going. The next inning, one out, Bregman hits it to the outfield, and then we have an error. The ball rolls behind the yep. outfielder, Hernandez, and Bregman gets to third. And you saw him go, let's go. You know, like to see that from Bregman and get him fired up, I, I thought that was huge in the game. Yeah, and then, and then Tuck came through. I mean, yeah. it was just a great. It was just great. They Naris manufactured it runs, all. John. They manufactured runs. That's right. It was the hero we needed, Hector Neris. Gracias, Hector.